So exactly one year ago, I built myself my first ever home server. This has been running absolutely fantastic and I've been using it mainly for Nextcloud and a wiki application to both back up my files from my gaming and rendering machine as well as to kind of store information that I didn't want to kind of save in my head. Now while this has been running really great, I have been starting to run into some issues with my Nextcloud sync, especially the one that is trying to sync all of my YouTube related projects. You see, I basically have one six terabyte hard drive in my computer where I have all of my YouTube related projects. And with Nextcloud trying to keep these files in sync all of the time, this has significantly slowed down my main gaming PC. So in today's video, it is finally time to upgrade this machine with something a little bit bigger, better and faster. That would even make Linus proud, maybe. But before we're gonna get right into today's server build, I'd like to thank Fractal Design for sponsoring the Define R6. And then I'd also like to thank Noctua for providing one of their NH-V15 CPU coolers for this project. And also I should probably talk about the kind of purpose that I have with this server build. Now my old server I'm gonna be using as the offsite backup at my parents' home, whereas this is gonna be kind of a redundant data storage for all of my YouTube related projects and also use it as a render server such that I can continue to use my gaming machine for other projects while this is rendering YouTube videos. Obviously I will still run Nextcloud on this server and then I'm gonna try and synchronize the backup server that is running at my parents' home with the Nextcloud instance on this machine. This is definitely gonna be a fun and very complicated project, so if you're interested in that, then definitely hit subscribe and look out for that video. Besides, I'm definitely also gonna set up Jira and Confluence as my project management tool and wiki on this new server. And with having said that, I think it's time to finally start off with the server build. Now this build I decided to do a little bit different from my usual build videos. So generally I would always go over each component before I started with the build. However, I thought that was rather tedious to watch through. So instead today we're gonna simply build the entire server and while building the server, we're simply gonna go over the reasons why I selected the specific parts that I did. Now, initially I planned to use the X570 Phantom Gaming 4 motherboard for this server build. In fact, I've actually already put everything together on this motherboard only to realize that with the cooler that I have gotten sponsored, so the Noctua NH-V15, we're not gonna be able to mount a graphics card on this specific motherboard. Unfortunately, the huge heatsink of the NH-V15 slightly overhangs the uppermost PCIe slot, making it basically impossible to properly mount a graphics card on this motherboard together with this cooler. Now this is an issue because the CPU that I selected is a Ryzen 7 3700X and this does not have an integrated GPU, therefore requiring me to actually have a GPU installed somewhere in the system. So to make things work, I had to go out and buy myself another ASRock motherboard. By the way, ASRock, if you see this video, you should definitely sponsor me for the next server build that I'm doing because my previous server had ASRock motherboards and now I had to buy two ASRock motherboards for this new server. So. I've definitely splurged on your motherboards. And as a short comparison, I'm just gonna show you the difference in this distance here between the mounting bracket for the CPU and the uppermost PCIe slot on the Phantom Gaming 4 and the Tai Chi motherboard. As you can see, we got just ever so slightly more space in between here than here, which is basically the little space that is required to properly mount a GPU with the Noctua NHD 15 cooler installed. So unfortunately we can't be using the Phantom Gaming 4 for this project, uh, which is a real shame because this would have been a great price for the performance that you're getting out of this board. All right, so that leaves us with the slight overkill in a motherboard for a server in the X570 Tai Chi. Now I'll likely also do a review on the Tai Chi X570. So if this is already live, then I'll have it linked in the card right now. So as I previously mentioned, I decided to go with a Ryzen 7 3700X CPU this is an 8-core 16-thread CPU, um, which is a little bit bulkier and beefier than what I've used for my previous um, server build. However, since this is more of a workstation server, I decided that I should probably go with something that had a little bit higher thread count. Now, Jira and Confluence, which are two applications that I'm planning on running on this server, are actually quite thread-hungry applications. And on my old server, which had an i7-3770K processor, that software was actually able to max out all of my cores pretty frequently. So hopefully with this 16 thread processor, we should be fine. Now the race cooler we're obviously not gonna be using since we have the Noctua NHD 15. And here is the CPU. So let's get this out of the box. Yeah, that's your new home. 
looking good. Now, one of the primary reasons why I went with ASRock instead of another brand as my motherboard was the fact that they supported ECC memory on pretty much all of their motherboards. Now, I did read that Gigabyte apparently also does support ECC memory on their boards, on the X570 chipset, but I didn't really trust their marketing too much. So I decided to go with something that for sure would support ECC memory. Now, the reason why I went with ECC memory is that I want to install ZFS on the server. So ZFS RAID 10 is what I have planned to run on the server. And obviously with ZFS, you should run ECC memory, which is basically um, error correcting memory, making sure that anything that goes into the memory actually also goes out of the memory as it was. So here I've got two 16 gig sticks of Kingston Premier Server um, DDR4 memory, which should be hopefully good enough for our server. But in case this is not enough, I'm gonna be able to extend this to 64 gigs down the line. All right, now next I'm gonna install my OS drive. Oops. Now I decided to go for an NVMe SSD for the operating system for one simple reason. I wanted to be able to connect as many hard drives to the SATA ports. And with this obviously going right onto the motherboard, I'm gonna be able to save one of these SATA ports for an actual hard drive. Now the first M.2 port actually goes straight into the CPU, whereas the second and third one go over the south bridge. Now this obviously comes with a fan as pretty much all of the X570 motherboards. So I think we're simply gonna install this operating drive at the uppermost M.2 port and screw that down with this absolute tiny little screw. Huh, no, wait, can't be like that. I think we have to remove this. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Now, in fact, we will not need this little miniature screw to install the NVMe SSD because on this motherboard, you can fasten both the M.2 and the heatsink using the slightly longer screw. And I think with that, we can move on to our cooler installation. As previously mentioned, we're gonna be using the Noctua NHD15 as CPU cooler. This has got to be one of the most performant and also most silent CPU coolers on the market. As thermal compound, I'm using Thermal Grizzly's Cryonaut. Last time I did this, I used way too much of this, so this time we're gonna downsize it a little bit. Let's clean this real quick. Now to mount this cooler, you're simply gonna have to line it up like so and screw it in. All right, next come the fans with these amazing fan clips. I'm honestly not the biggest fan of these clips, but I guess they work. All right, first one's a germ. Oh, I actually mounted it the wrong way around. Oh well, I'm not gonna bother. I'm not gonna turn it around again. Forgive me, Noctua. So now all that's left to do is to connect the low noise adapters as well as this Y cable, which that both fans will actually spin in tandem. And the pre-assembly is basically done. Only took forever. And with the motherboard fully assembled, it is now time to talk about the case that I selected for this project. Now, as I previously mentioned, this is the Fractal Design Define R6. This is basically the bigger brother to the Define Mini that I used for my previous server build. So just to give you a bit of a size comparison, this was my old server, which was a Define Mini case, and this is gonna be the new server with the Define R6. Now, I think it's a real shame that the Define Mini is no longer available, because in my opinion, this was the perfect home server case. It was super small, compact, but also had the sound dampening materials on the inside, making it super silent. Now, the reason why I went with Fractal again is basically because first of all, their cases have these kind of sound dampening material on the inside. You can see this is on both sides and also on the upper part. Now, since I will also install this server in my studio where I'm gonna record my YouTube videos, I need to have the server to be as silent as possible. And also because this case can accommodate up to 11 hard drives, which is obviously perfect for a home server. Something else that's actually really cool is that the R6 comes with this fan hub such that you can connect up to nine additional fans to one single port. Another fantastic feature of this case is this huge fan mesh at the bottom, where you have your additional intake fans as well as the intake of your power supply. So the first order of business is gonna to be to install these Corsair fans in order to allow more air to flow into the case. Now, I really hope that these fans are not too loud because otherwise I'm probably gonna to have to replace them with some more silent Noctua fans but I really wanted to go for these 140 millimeter fans 
over the ones that I got from Moktua, which are actually 120 millimeters, um, because I want to have as much fresh air flowing into this case as possible. Now as power supply, I chose the Seasonic Prime Fanless TX700, as this is, as the name suggests, a fanless power supply, which makes this entire server much more silent. I've actually been using Seasonic for my previous server as well, and it's actually been running extremely well with the, I think, 400 watt power supply that I use there, or 450. Also, if I'm not mistaken, this actually has a titanium um, rating, making this one of the most efficient power supplies that you can buy on the market. Now to install the power supply, you have to kind of pop off the power supply shroud that's put into the Define R6. And this goes on with four normal screws. Now, just for the keen eyed among you, yes, there is no kind of intake of air below the power supply, but this is how it's supposed to be. You have to have the open side on top such that the heat that's generated from the power supply can actually ri rise into your chassis and be ventilated out of it eventually. All right, and then you can basically just insert this into the case like so. Now, whilst we're already on this side, let's already um, connect the pre-installed case fans to our fan hub. Oh, interesting. So these three are four pin or PWM and the other ones are voltage controlled or only three pin. Fascinating. Now, that's funny. It appears to be very little space here to actually get to your power supply once it's already installed. So I guess I have to take this out again, connect all the cables first to the power supply and then only put it in. All right, so let's see, what do we actually have to connect here? Obviously, we're gonna need the 24 pin um, ATX header. So this is for the motherboard, which I guess plugs into motherboard. Then we're gonna need one eight pin CPU power connection for the motherboard. And since we're gonna use this GTX 1080 graphics card for this server, as there's gonna be a render server, we're gonna need two more PCIe um, eight pin power connectors. And finally, we're gonna connect five hard drives to this case, four of which are gonna be in RAID 10 ZFS. And the fifth is going to be for the Nextcloud instance, which is basically just syncing my private files from my gaming PC. And with this huge rat's nest, let's try and see if we can still put this into the case. Check out that mess. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? And it looks like we should be just about fine. Yeah, if you're checking out the clearance that I got here, it's not too great. Um, but yeah, it, it, it kind of works. It's kind of chunky, but I guess it works. Now, I think this would actually be a good time to put in our hard drives into the drive caddies here. Now, Fractal Design were absolute legends in providing me with even more drive caddies that I could put in here and put in more hard drives into this server. Initially, the plan was to have 10 4 terabyte hard drives in a RAID C10 volume and then have an 11th hard drive for Nextcloud. However, in terms of upgradability, that's obviously a bad idea. So I decided to go for four 8 terabyte hard drives, again in RAID Z10, which I could then extend upon in the future. So what I've got here are four 8TB Seagate Iron Wolf hard drives. Those are the NAS standard hard drives, so they should be able to last rather long in a 24-7 operation mode. All right, let's get all of these puppies out of their packaging and hooked up to the drive caddies that I've got in this server. Now the fifth hard drive that I wanna put into this server, which apparently I don't have in front of me right now, is going to be the hard drive that is currently in my main gaming and rendering machine, which is currently used as my YouTube drive. Obviously, I don't install this as long as I don't have all of my data on these 8 terabyte hard drives um, secured. So for now, we're just gonna install these four hard drives. Whew, all right, so that's done. It's always good fun to put these hard drives into these drive plates. Now let's think about a clever way to put them into the drive cage here. I'm thinking about separating them by two each in order for the hard drives to get as much airflow as possible. So I'm thinking like, here would be a good first spot. Then we're gonna separate the next by two. Screw that drive, boy. Just like this, I think we should have plenty of airflow coming from these two 140 millimeter fans 
in the front here. Alrighty, let's continue with the power cables. So they all got juice and we also need to connect our fan hub or to supply it with SATA power rather. And then there's these Velcro straps that are already pre-installed in the case. Definitely very handy in terms of being able to do cable management with. And finally, we got CPU power, which is probably smart to route it through here as this is usually at the bottom, eh, at the top left corner. So I think I should be able to just casually drop this on its side. Now, luckily we're not gonna be needing to install an IO shield because the one they have here is actually already pre-applied. Well, this is gonna be fun to put that in. All right, let's continue connecting our SATA cables to the motherboard. SATA cables connected. Now we'll see if this eight power pin is gonna be enough or if I'm gonna to have to also hook up this additional four pin power plug. But I think it should be enough because I'm not planning to overclock my Ryzen 7 3700X. Why does it always have to be so annoying with those? Uh, this is horrible. Oof. Also, I had to be very clever with the place that I put my hard drives in in order for this to actually fit. All right, there you go. This time it sounded better than last time. It was like... It's almost dinner time, but we are going to also install the 10 gigabit ethernet adapter uh, into this machine. So we're gonna have a direct 10 gigabit link uh, from this machine to the 10 gigabit switch. Uh, into my gaming PC, which also has a 10 gigabit um, Ethernet port. All right, so I just had a lovely dinner and I did some cable management on my server. So you can see the uh, cooler fans are no longer dangling in the middle of the case um, and everything just looks nice and neat. And with that, I think it's now about time to see if I did everything right and see if we're gonna get into the BIOS. Wish me luck. Everything lights up nice and dandy. Sotec logo is also lighting up nice and bright. And we are getting into the post. Awesome. All right, as you can see, we are successfully in the BIOS. I hope this is all nice and sharp on screen for you guys. And we can see that we have an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X installed, 32 gigs of DDR4 memory, in terms of power consumption, this server uses about 125 watts when all four drives are being accessed. So let's see what we can actually tune here. Um, if we go into hardware monitor, we can see that the CPU is around 52 degrees. That's not great um, for the system being idle and not really doing anything. But I did read that I'm probably gonna have to lower the v-core voltage yeah it's sitting at around 1.5 volts that's a lot of voltage going into that chip all right i think we can put in a minus offset here so if we reduce by 50 millivolts we should be sitting at actually let's reduce by 150 millivolts i want to go i want to i want to let, let this sit around 1.35 Also, by the way, if you've noticed, it's gotten dark because this project has been dragging along since forever. And if I say that, you don't even believe me how long. I've been working on this project for three months now. So uh, yeah, once this is finally done, I'm gonna be like super happy. All right, so the V-Core voltage dropped down to 1.3 and the temperatures are now in a more acceptable 40s degree range. Now there is a bit of annoying fan noise coming from this case. But if I can eliminate that noise, it's gonna be super, super quiet actually. Now, after a bit of a detour, I finally figured out what the issue was with my server and where this super loud whining noise came from. It was actually that tiny little Southbridge fan that ramped up to like 5,000 RPM because the Southbridge got like 75 degrees without it actually being used. But the reason is obviously because this humongous graphics card was right in front of the Southbridge intake fan. So I did some Googling and I figured out that I could run my graphics card in a PCIe times eight slot. This is obviously going to decrease its performance. I'm not sure by how much, but since I'm only gonna be using this as a render server, I don't think it'll matter too much, hopefully. Anyhow, it's kind of janky, but I kind of put it down to an X8 slot 
and put the um, 10 gigabit Ethernet card up such that I actually get some nice airflow here over the Southbridge chip. Now I haven't actually booted this yet, but let's just hope that this weird solution is gonna make sure that the Southbridge keeps at a more reasonable temperature like 40 degrees, 50 degrees, maybe not 70 or 80. That would be absolutely fantastic. So let's try it out. That is a Southbridge. Now let's see if it if it'll rump down now. We do only have 60 degrees on the south bridge now instead of 75, so that's good. But 4,000 RPM, that's mad. Now we can change the uh, fan mode for the south bridge fan by going all the way to the bottom. And it is a performance, so let's put it to full speed. Full speed is 6,000 RPM. And with it completely off, the temperature are, are at 64 degrees. Okay, it's not rising, but still, why is this fan like it is? Well, this is more, this is more usable. This is, this is more what I, what I want it to be. So yeah, with that, I guess I finally made this system as silent as I possibly could. Uh, and we should probably end the video because it's probably been rolling for way too long. For those of you guys who have been sticking out until now, you guys absolutely rock. Now, if you like this video, then definitely leave a like and consider subscribing for more server-related tutorials and videos on this channel. But that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next video.